Hi guys, uh, I've gotten a lot of requests from viewers to do an Excel course that uh, takes people from zero to hero in Excel. So uh, this video series is that course. We start with the absolute basics and go through all corners of Excel and uh, we'll even get our hands dirty with VBA which is basically Excel's scripting or programming language. So let's get started. Uh, Excel is a so-called spreadsheet application. Uh, with Excel we can carry out calculations, build charts. With Excel we can develop databases. Uh, we can construct complex mathematical models. And with the help of VBA, basically Excel's programming language, we can develop applications for others to use. Now, the basis of all Excel work is the workbook. And when you start Excel, you get an empty workbook called, in, the, in this case, book one. And each Excel file that you save is basically a workbook. And this workbook contains a number of tables. It can contain one or more tables or also called worksheets or sheets. In this case here, my workbook has got three sheets. Now each sheet or table is independent of the others and you can reach any table or sheet just by clicking its name. So now I'm sheet three, now sheet two, sheet one, etc. Now, what's the maximum number of worksheets I can get in, in, a, in an Excel file or an Excel book? Well, it depends on how much RAM your computer got. The more RAM you got, the more tables you can insert. I have developed Excel applications on a computer with not a lot of RAM, and those Excel applications contained more than 150 sheets and they worked without any problems. So yeah, you know, you can have a large number of tables in your workbook. Uh, the name of each sheet can be easily changed. There are two ways of doing it. One way is to double click it. Let's say sheet one, I want to change that name. So I just double click it and you see now it's selected and now I just write a new uh, name for instance contacts okay and another way to rename a sheet is you just click right click it you, and basically you click it with the right mouse key and then you have here rename and you just type in uh, the second name or another name groceries and like I said the um, the, the sheets are independent of one another. So you can have in one sheet certain content and another sheet another content. Obviously, they're somehow, they should be somehow related because they're all in the same uh, workbook. Otherwise, it's quite senseless to have random uh, sheets in a specific workbook. Now, how to get extra sheets? Because I just got three, I need more. There's the button for that. You just click on that and you get more sheets. Let's insert a lot of sheets. And now you see I've inserted so many sheets I can't see them all at once. And that's why we got these four arrows here. That one takes us to the left sheet by sheet. That one takes us to the right sheet by sheet. And this one takes us to the first sheet, i.e. the first sheet on the left. And this one takes us to the last sheet i.e. the last sheet on the right okay and these 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 arrows are very helpful or these navigation arrows are very helpful if you got a lot of tables a lot of sheets and if you notice this bar here is divided into two sections the first section contains all those sheets and the second section and the second section contains the scroll bar, the horizontal scroll bar. And here you've got a slider where you can change the proportion of each of these sections. For instance, I want to have a big 
area for the scroll bar so just slide the slider and you see the scroll bar gets now a lot of real estate whereas the table tabs or the sheet tabs don't and if I slide the slider to the right the sheet tabs get a lot of real estate whereas the scroll bar doesn't so basically if you have a lot of sheets or a lot of tables in your Excel workbook uh, it might be advisable to give them some space so you can see a lot of more tables at once because if you slide it this way you just see two tables so it's not very helpful so always gotta you know click on the arrows to get your tables to see that relevant table that you need whereas with the slider this way it's much easier to see the tables because you can see many more tables at once with the slider set like that and you don't need a lot of space for that horizontal bar right now we know how to add sheets how, how do we delete sheets again there are multiple methods one method is just right click any sheet you want to delete and then go to delete and it's gone okay let's delete 11 as well this way and it's also gone another way to delete sheets is you just click that sheet and then you go to delete and there are multiple issues here and multiple options which we will take care of later but this is the one we need right now delete sheet and it's gone let's delete 13 as well and it's gone okay so now let's drill down into the sheets themselves let's go to our first sheets contacts and you can see and that, that, that applies to each sheet a sheet contains a lot of columns and each column is identified by, a, by an alphabet so this is column A this is column B column C and so on and then you've got the rows and these are identified by, by numbers so this is row 1 row 2 etc and those boxes one can click in those boxes are called cells and cells are identified by the column name or uh, uh, let me put it this way they're identified by a combination of column name and row name so basically this cell is D4 and you can see the name right here this this bar here is called the formula bar because in here in here we're gonna be in future we're gonna be typing our formulas in here so if I click here you can see I am in the cell F8 ie column 8 uh, sorry uh, column F row 8 H8 column H row 8 okay and so on uh, how many columns can you have in a specific sheet you can have around 16,000 columns in a sheet and around 1 million rows in a sheet I'm gonna put the exact number at the bottom of the uh, in, in the description of this video but basically you have you can have 16,000 sheets uh, sorry 16,000 columns in a sheet and 1 million rows in a sheet okay now if I want to input data just like in other applications I just click in, in the first cell and just write name for instance with return with the return key I go one cell down okay with the tab key I go to the right uh, and then I can also navigate with those four arrows on your keyboard between your text and your numerical keyboard you got like these four arrows with these you can navigate up down right left okay and that's how you can type in or you can click with the mouse in a specific cell and then uh, write your data in okay and I'm going with I'm pressing the upward arrow so I'm up here and then sorry. right now how do I edit uh, content there are multiple ways of doing it one way is you just click the cell now if I write anything in here I'm just going to replace name with whatever I write so I just press one key pop, and already name has been replaced by G okay so that's one way of editing okay another way of editing is you double click so basically if I double click here 
Now I've got a cursor right in the middle of the text. And now with my arrows, I can uh, uh, navigate to that place where I want that cursor to be and then do my editing. So for instance here, instead of Henry, it should be Harry. So I just got a backspace N and E and then H R. So I got Harry. Okay. Another way to, to edit is basically you just click on that cell. Let me go outside. Let me say I want to change Alfred into Alfredo. I just click on the cell and I can then write in the formula bar or edit uh, the stuff in the formula just add an O here okay or let's say Smith instead of Smith it should be Smythe i.e. the I should be replaced with a with a Y so I just go in here and then take the cursor here to the I and then do the Y all right so this is the way you can edit your text in Excel so like I said like you got like three ways to edit first is you click on the cell and then write anything the, the new content in the new content will replace the old content and yeah oh by the way if you let's say I've written here something ah uh, you know what I want to get that old content back just press the escape button on your on your uh, on your keyboard or the escape key on your keyboard and you're out of there and the old content is back okay the second way to edit is to double click and you got the cursor in here and then you can with the arrows you can move the cursor to that desired position and then do your editing or you can click in a certain cell and then here in the formula bar click in the change the content to whatever you need it to be right let's get to the last step of this first video and that's basically saving to save this workbook is similar to saving uh, a file in any other application you've got the save button in here just press it and because I have not yet saved this workbook once I press the button, I'm going to get this dialog save as where I have to give a name. Let's say uh, lesson one or lesson zero. Yeah, I've got to give a name and set a place where I want to save this. And then I can go to save. Now, any further saves I do, let's say Lisa. Oops, uh, got too far down. Let's say Lisa Harrison. Now, if I was safe, I don't have to input anything anymore because the application now got the name and the location of that file. It doesn't need that information anymore. It'll just save it automatically.